Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick look at some of the new features on this new charger from Toolkit RC. This is the new M6 AC single battery charger that was released a day or two ago. Now I've had it in for a little time, so I've had a chance to play with it, go through the menus and things. As usual, these kind of things tend to ship with version one of the firmware and as things change, additional features are added. So if you're watching this video, four or five months from now, they may have changed a few things via the firmware, via feedback from users that kind of ask for specific functions. Now, I am a fan of the toolkit stuff, specifically around the things like this thing here, the watt meter, the servo tester, and also this multifunction tool. These kind of things sit by the side of my workbench and are invaluable when I'm trying to figure stuff out. If I want to know whether or not a signal is getting to where it needs to be, I can check it. If I can check whether the S bus output is working on that particular receiver, I can plug it in, I can check it. I can do things like test my motors, do loads of different things. These little things are great. And actually I should have put them on my Christmas wish list because having these things on your bench is fab when you're trying to figure out why something isn't working in the way that it's supposed to. Now, Toolkit I see have also been making charges for a long time. And I know lots of you probably read some of people complaining about issues in the past with Toolkit RC chargers. I read those things too. And it was surprising that there were that many people complaining about that stuff. But it's one of those things, isn't it? If somebody has a great experience with a the product, they might tell a couple of people. If they have a bad experience with a the product, they'll pretty much tell everybody. So I never knew whether or not that was a representative sample because the toolkit RC chargers that I've had in here have actually worked pretty well. So well, in fact, that the last charger that I got in here from toolkit RC, uh, one of the last ones anyway, which was this Q6AC, this is a four port charger and actually I use it all the time. This has become my own four port charger for my own hobby flying here, both AC and DC, full four ports, has a little kind of status LEDs at the front. The menu is nice and simple to navigate. It's It's been great and I've continued to use it. It's also handy, it's got the wireless charger on the top so you can stick your phone on there while everything else is charging too. So I am a little bit more comfortable around Toolkit RC's ability to make a solid charger. And I guess it was inevitable that they were going to start to make chargers that had some of that functionality, things like servo testing and stuff built in. And this is one of the latest that has some of that extra functionality. So it isn't just a charger, it's also useful when you're troubleshooting making stuff too. Dual input on this one, uh, this is AC and DC, so you can run it if it's on the bench, but also take it with you to the field if you want to top a battery up, if you have a large enough battery to plug it into. Uh, I've actually got my hands on this adapter cable. This is an adapter cable that allows you to plug it into the cigarette lighter socket, or now I think it's more politically correct to call it the 12 volt power jack in a car, but those of us of a certain age will know it's actually for the lighter. You can plug it in and charge it from that as well. Of course, be careful running things off your battery in your car. You might get a day's flying, but you might not be able to get home. 15 amps max charging current on this and a one amp balance current, which is much, much higher than lots of the other little charges that I've had in here. That means that it should make short work of balancing packs that have got dramatically out of balance as they've been flown. Plus, this also is a bench power supply, a signal and resistance measurer, a signal generator, an ESC tester, and a DJI style charger too for things like UAVs. So I'll unbox it and show what you get in the box. Let's go through this. So input voltage is 100 to 240 volts. Maximum wattage on AC is 120 watts. On DC, it'll work from seven to 35 volts. Battery type is LiPo, LAHV, LAFE, lithium ion, LTO, nickel metal hydride, and some other things too. We'll go through that in a minute. I want to show you how this works. Balance current, as I've already mentioned, is a whopping 1000 milliamps or one amp at 4.2 volts. Balance accuracy, it reckons, is 0.005 volts. Seems to be pretty accurate from what I'm playing with here. 
USB A port at the front will output five volts at one amps or 10 watts. And it does measure the internal resistance, you'll see that in a minute, from 0.1 milliohms to 99 milliohms on each of the cells. The measure of functionality will measure PWM, PPM and SBUS, and it will output PWM, PPM and SBUS signals as well. And the power supply will work from 0.5 to 15 amps at 1 to 28 volts. 108 by 106 by 60 millimeters, product weight is about 350 grams. And this is a two inch IPS LCD with 320 by 240 pixels. So let's plug it in and actually put it through its paces. I'm gonna run it off a battery here on the bench just so that it's easier for me to get everything in the camera. Just gonna use one of my kind of charging batteries that I would use at the field. There we have the screen has popped up straight away. Pressing the button at the top, doesn't do a lot. Pressing and holding the button at the top gets us into the options here for accessibility, measuring resistance to measure signal, signal output, ESC test and power. So these will give you access to all the additional features that are squirreled away inside this thing. So for example, if we do signal output and we hit that, then we can choose PWM, PPM, SBUS, and then back to PWM. So not a massive amount of stuff, but that can be incredibly useful if you want to make sure that something is working. Let's come out of that. And then we've got things like power supply. So here we can set the maximum voltage. This again is from one to I think 30 volts and also the maximum current too. I wonder what the minimum current is on here because having a very low current can be very, very helpful when you're troubleshooting stuff. Goes up to 500 milliamps, which is okay, but I would have liked it to go down a little bit further for a bench power supply when you're playing with stuff. That should be fine for most things, but I personally would have wanted that a little bit more. Coming out of that menu, if we press and hold the circle key at the bottom, that gets us into the charger menu. So this allowed to set it up. So we can set the input settings. So that'll decide on the power, what a power adapter we've got, the maximum power, maximum current voltage range. We can change things like the security settings, personalization. So we can set the internal temperatures the timer, which is handy, the maximum capacity, which is handy. I would certainly drop that from 30 amp hours. I don't tend to use batteries that big. And we have lots of options in here. So let's come out of that. So let's have a go at setting up and charging a battery. A little press on the bottom button, which goes into the menu. We can then decide how we want everything set. Battery types here are LiPo, LIHV, high voltage, LAFE, lithium ion, LTO, nickel metal hydride, lead acid, or UAV battery. That's the one for the DJI stuff. Let's go just for the LiPo stuff. Cells will leave it automatic. Mode can be charge, discharge, storage charge, or destroy. I do like destroy. It means that if you are running your battery and you get to the end of its life and it needs to be retired, you can then just plug it into this and it'll take all the voltage out so it's safe to do the recycling stuff. We'll just stick it on charge for now. End voltage is going to be 4.2. Charge current will set that. Uh, this is a 1500 milliamp hour pack. So we will be nice to it and set it at 1.4 amps. So that's slightly under 1C, just to be nice. The other thing as well is just if I go into charge, one of the things you might spot is if we go into something like discharge, we also get the option to set the discharge mode and we can have internal or external. Let's just see if we get a different one. If I go into storage charge, at the moment, with this version of the software, it's not letting me change anything. So it's going to dissipate the additional voltage as heat inside of this. It has a nice big fan at the back. Uh, it would be nice if that was available to pump the energy back into the battery that this thing has been run from, if it's coming from DC. Um, that would be nice. Maybe that will come in a future firmware update. These tends to work that way. Let's just put that back onto charge and that menu item will disappear. So this menu 
does change a little bit as you move around. So be careful with that. If you can't find a particular option, it might be because you haven't selected something. We're going to have the end voltage at 4.2. This is actually a HV pack, I've just noticed. So you know what? Let's change that. Let's go to LIHV, 4.35. Right, let's plug it in the front. Again, single charge port on here, sadly. Um, these, I do like jewels usually. It's pretty clear which way the balance connector goes in, so that's good. There we go, it's all plumbed in. So let's hit start. Charge to 17.4 volts, okay. And there we are, we are now charging. Things we can see. We can see the individual cell voltages. Uh, that's nice to see. And also the individual things changing on the screen that's letting us know what it's actually doing. Lovely to see that the internal resistances are all being measured as well. Uh, this is a GMB pack. And as usual, the cells are beautifully matched. That doesn't surprise me. We'll see how that works after a couple more flights on it. And then we can just see the charging, the watts that we're using at the moment, we're using 21.4 watts. And um, we can just keep monitoring. So that's how it works and how it's set up. It's very easy to navigate. This is kind of your menu button. These are your up and down. I do like this. This screen is a little bit of, um, because it's super, super shiny, an absolute fingerprint magnet. But I like the fact that they've given a nice screen that's easy to see. It's easy to view from lots of different angles. No LEDs or anything to show you what's going on. But the nice thing about this is what we could do is while the battery is charging, because it's a standard A style USB output here, you could plug in something else, which I don't know, you know, maybe your action camera or your goggles battery or whatever it is. There's an option to charge that at the same time. But in terms of how it works and how accurate it is from the playing here, it's been pretty good. So from the playing I've done here, this does exactly what you would expect it to. The kind of functionality that you get in here is going to be incredibly useful if you are starting out in your hobby and you want a charger for simple LiPo batteries so you can charge them one at a time, but you'd like some of that additional functionality that traditionally you've got by buying a separate box. This is an incredibly useful station that you could have on your bench that would actually be useful for lots and lots of different things. I really like the fact that Toolkit RC are starting to build in this extra functionality and make it so that with one box on your desk, it'll provide you with all that functionality rather than have what I have here, which is five or six different boxes and different things from Toolkit RC to basically have the same thing. So if you're starting out in radio control um, or maybe you're looking for something for a nice Christmas present for yourself and a charger potentially is on the list, but you like the idea of it not only being able to charge your batteries at the field and at home, but also having all that extra functionality, then this one is definitely worth a look. Link in the description below. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.